The first type of stepper motor we will consider is the permanent magnet motor. This is a fairly simple design. It consists of a permanent magnet rotor, which is diametrically magnetized. In this simplified version, we have four coils, connected as two separate pairs. Each pair is connected to a different phase. When pair one energizes, the magnet rotates to align with this. The next pair is energized, and this causes the rotor to again turn and align. The coils keep turning on and off, and the current flows in different directions to create the rotation. In this design, the motor turns 90 degrees on each step. We could improve this with more coils or more magnetic poles on the rotor. The variable reluctant stepper motor is a little different. This type uses a soft iron ferromagnetic rotor, which means this material is attracted to a magnetic field, but it is not a permanent magnet. In this design, we have four teeth on the rotor. We can also see there are three sets of coils, each set connected to a different phase. Notice there are a different number of coils and rotor teeth. This prevents the rotor teeth from all aligning at the same time. In this case, we're going to use three switches to control the motor. When switch two closes, the coils magnetize and attract the rotor teeth, causing it to turn. Then switch three closes and the rotor turns again to align with the magnetic field. Then switch one closes and the rotor turns. This sequence then repeats. In this design, the rotor turns 30 degrees with each step. There are multiple ways to reduce the step angle. For example, adding a fourth phase and more teeth to the rotor. The hybrid stepper motor is the most common version used. It is a hybrid because it is a combination of the variable reluctance and the permanent magnet stepper motor. If we look at this simplified version with four coils connected in two pairs, we have the actually magnetized rotor, meaning the poles are at opposite ends. The rotor has three teeth on each magnetic pole. There are a different number of teeth and coils to prevent them from all aligning at the same time. When we energize the coils, they form north and south poles. These interact with the rotor's permanent magnetic field. The rotor's south pole tooth is repelled by the stator's south pole and is also attracted to the stator's north pole. Meanwhile, the rotor's north pole tooth is repelled by the stator's north pole and is attracted to the stator's south pole. This causes rotation. Then, the next set of coils are energized. The rotor's magnetic field are again attracted and repelled by the stator's coils, causing rotation. This continues with the different sets of coils being energized and the current reversing to change polarity of the coil. In this example, each step is 30 degrees. So now, when we look at a more complex hybrid stepper motor, we can see the same thing happening, but with greater precision. There are eight coils split into two groups of four. The rotor has 50 teeth and the stator has 48 teeth. When the coils are energized, they create magnetic fields which interact with the rotor's permanent magnet. Looking closer, we can see that each time the coil polarity changes, it causes the rotor to turn one step, which in this case is 1.8 degrees. Notice that each time it turns, only the teeth nearest the north polarity stator coils align. All other rotor teeth do not. Remember, the rotor contains a permanent magnet, which is actually magnetized, meaning the poles are at opposite ends. So, while the rotor's south pole teeth align with the stator's north polarity coils, the rotor's north pole teeth align with the stator's south polarity coils. This design gives us very high precision and torque. Check out one of the videos on screen now to continue learning about electrical and electronics engineering, and I'll catch you there for the next lesson. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, and of course, the engineeringmindset.com.